Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. Hi there. This is Christian Dye and Mike Stewart, March 10th, 2021. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we want to talk today about rising mortgage rates, uh, which a lot of us uh, know is now uh, uh, occurring here in Vancouver, and how this will affect the Vancouver market. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a market update uh, from a statistical point of view over here, okay? So real estate in Vancouver in February of 2021, listings were up 56% from last month. And this is 73.3% higher than the same time last year. Now, to remind you, we usually uh, mention this, when you have sales, uh, analysts predict when sales prices are going down, when the sales to listings ratio is below 12%. So sales to active listings ratio is below 12%. That means prices are trending down. When the sales to active listing ratio is above 20%, that means it's a signal that sales are going up. In December of 20, uh, that should say December 2020, uh, we were at about 35% for detached homes, 50% for townhomes, 33% for condos. In January, 26% for homes because we had a lot more product come on the market, 37 for townhomes, 27 for condos. February, this was just last month, we're back up. 41 for homes, 61 for townhomes, 41 for condos. What does this mean according to the analysts? It means that, of course, all these numbers are, are over 20%, which means that sales prices are trending up, okay? So that means in 2021, it's like trying to turn a boat around, right? Uh, they're not going to suddenly correct really, really quickly. The, 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 the momentum keeps going upward, upward, upward. What do we feel? We do feel that the prices will continue to go up in 2021. Now, what about the, what about the mortgage rates, Christian? Uh, what's going to happen with the mortgage rates? Is that going to correct us or stop us or curve it down a little bit? What I wanted to do is I want to talk about history a little bit. So if you take a look at the seven-year historical lending rate chart, the crazy 80s when the mortgage rates were uh, in the low 20%, um, and of course, they, they stayed steady at like 18%, 18%. And then there was a tiny little pocket there when there were as, uh, as high as 22.75%, the historical largest uh, 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 point over there. So, so one of the things is uh, to say is that what happened in the years when mortgage rates went up aggressively? Did it slow down uh, the real estate market? Yes, but only for a short period of time did it slow it down. That's what we believe is going to happen again. If there is a slowdown, it doesn't mean prices. Uh, 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 I don't think that prices will be negatively affected unless we see data showing that prices will be negatively affected. And of course, we were using data such as sales to active listings. That's what's going to guide us to let us know uh, which direction is the price is going to go. But if we take a look at the trends as to what... Um, was going on with uh, uh, with actual mortgage rates over here. Uh, my my uh, uh, in several different parts uh, of my analysis, including uh, talking with people who are around uh, as far back as the '80s. Believe it or not, when the interest rates went up, the more, sorry, when the lending rates went up, people actually started to buy more. Now, why would in the in the worst time ever in the 1980s, when the when the interest rates were at 22%, why would anyone actually be buying real estate when interest rates are at 22%? And here's the answer: they didn't have a crystal ball to tell them where they were going to go the next year. We had newspapers that were they had newspapers saying that the interest rates could go as high as 28 or 30%. And at that rate over there, if you didn't buy, then you were going to miss the boat and you might never, ever be able to ever afford a house. So let's play that out in today's market. Let's play it out in today's market. Interest rates are at about 1.6, 1.7%. Okay. Now I want you to say the interest rates are on their way up. And let's say they might land at 2%, maybe even 2.5%. And if you're, in, if you're looking to buy a property, is that going to motivate you to want to get into the market or want to motivate you to stay outside of the market? 
If you knew that you only had a year left at under 2% interest rates, you're going to run out, you're going to try to buy a property, right? Well, it's supply and demand. Now we got too much demand. What's it going to do to the prices? It's going to push them up. It's going to push them up over here. So now I've given you a statistical sort, sort, sort of a, a historical point of view over here. Mike, I want you to chime in over here. Tell me what's your view. Yeah, no, I, I agree with this. You know, if you look at one thing I just wanted to, you know, to talk about a historical thing too, is the reason why interest rates um, were so high during those times is because there was excess demand in the economy. So the economy was booming. You know, in the, you know, in the early 1980s, when Paul Volcker, who, Paul Volcker, who was the head of the uh, Federal Reserve, raised rates that high, he did that to cool the economy down because the economy was running too hot. And so what we're seeing right now with this uptick, slight uptick in, super, in the super low rates we have, is just an indication that the economy is starting to come back. And quite frankly, I don't see it as that bad of a thing at all. I think it's actually quite normal because the reason why interest rates are going up is is because the bond market, which can, which is what controls variable rates in Canada, has basically indicated that they anticipate, um, ex, you know, accelerated economic growth and good times ahead. And so, when you have really good economic, um, uh, when you have a really good economy and the economy is growing and there's demand for money, that pushes up the interest rate, and that's a, that's a normal thing. Now, in terms of what we're seeing in the market, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, for, for most types of property with few exceptions, um, there's excess demand, not enough supply. You know, single family houses under 0.5 million are just crazy. And you're seeing, you're going to see in the statistics package, which um, Christian referenced here, um, and we can send a copy to you if you want, just send me an email or a Christian email after this. Um, you know, you're seeing, you're going to start seeing dramatic price increases. You are seeing price increases now, but I think over the next few months, you're really going to see dramatic price increases, um, which is reflecting what we're seeing right now, because using just statistics to um, see what's happening in the market is kind of like driving a car with the windshield black uh, painted over and looking in the rear view mirror. But yeah, right now what we're seeing is, yeah, we're starting, we're seeing significant upward pressure on prices. Yeah. So, so Mike is literally on the front lines. He's the one who has to put in the offer. He's the one who's getting outbid with his clients. He's the one who knows the prices that it's going to take in order to do this. So uh, I don't see anything slowing down. Uh, uh, if we take a look at the real estate forecast of 2021, Canadian Real Estate Association still predicts a positive 9.1% in prices and that's across canada that's not talking about vancouver that's across canada right remax predicts four to six percent and royal lepage positive 5.5 percent now the statistics package that we're talking about is the analysis on lower mainland real estate specifically at the end we also share... have it for, sorry to interrupt we have it but, for victoria the fraser valley and the okanagan as well if anybody's tuning in from those places sorry to interrupt christian no problem my, I will share Mike's email address and his cell number at the end over here. If you would like the, the, the statistics I'm showing right now, give Mike a quick email and then he'll send this over to you as a PDF. This is about three or four pages out of a document that's probably more like 10, 15 pages. So if we take a look over here, this is the latest report. And if you take a look, uh, what I like to look at is what is the one month change and the three month change? So if you take a look, depending on where you live over here, let's say that you live in uh, uh, the lower mainland over here, we've got a 3.1% change just in the last one month. We've got a 4.9% change in the last three months. In the last six months, we have a 6% change. What are we noticing over here? Every number here is positive. We are trending upwards, okay? Now, if we dissect this, and said, well, what about houses? Okay, so here's detached homes, the same thing over here. Take a look at just the one month change over here, 3.9%, uh, uh, you know, depending on the area, but all of these, you know, barring, you know, a po negative 0.2, which is pretty much negligible, all of these are trending up. If you, the, the three months change, remember the three months, that was just back in November, right? That's just back in November. The prices over here compared to November, Look at, uh, uh, you know, Coquitlam, 7.1, Greater Vancouver, 5.3, Lower Mainland, 7.3. We are heavily, heavily trending up. The one-year percentage changed double digits. We are double digits across the board for, 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 for housing over here. 
I think that uh, uh, especially you get that entry level house and I'm talking about the next step from a townhouse or a condo up to the next house over here, low one millions, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3, all the way to probably 1.6. Those things are gonna be on fire, on absolute fire. They already fire. are. They already That's are, why? Right? There's too little supply. There's too much demand, interest rates. People are holding on to a 1.6, 1.5 interest rate, and it's only good for another 90 days or something like that. They're going to be very, very anxious. And or let's play out this scenario. They've already sold their property and they have to buy in order to close on the sale. Well, that buyer, do you like, you know, that buyer is going to be very, very, very motivated, very motivated to get into that next property because he's going to lose his first deal without it. They or go, or yep, yep. he's sold. Or somebody is sold and they're sitting on cash. And when you're in a market, and when you're in a real estate market with rapidly rising prices and you're sitting on cash and you don't have real estate, every time that price of real estate goes up, it has a relative, it basically shrinks the purchasing power of the cash you have. So that's another thing to think about as well when you're in a situation of rapidly rising prices. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris, I'm going to interrupt. Yeah, you know, and you've also got the you, you've also got uh, uh you've also got people. Uh, here's the stats for condos. Somebody already asked for the stats for condos. Here it is. Uh, you've got people over here who also have sold. And yes, they're sitting on cash. But not only that, they're kind of homeless. They're living in parents' basements. They're, they're in a short-term <laughs> rental. They're in an Airbnb. They're, they're like saying, oh, I thought we'd only be in this situation for a month. We're, we're, we're bordering on month three now. And they're really, really dying to get out of there, right? So, yep. so over here uh, on condos, last time we spoke, you know, we said that condos weren't as hot right now. I would still say the same. I would still say the same. Okay. Um, and, and, and I would say over here um, that uh, uh, condos, they are in the positive direction. In the one month change, these numbers are all going up over here. In the six month change, they're slowly trending up. So it, it is real estate across the board. Uh, Mike, so somebody... One yeah. One thing I just wanted to add, sorry to interrupt, with condos, one thing we are noticing is a bit of softness. I wouldn't say softness. If, if you compare it to what's happening with houses, basically Boundary Road East and, you know, in the North Vancouver, um, you, you could say that some condos in some pockets, particularly high-end expensive condos, are kind of soft right now, just because you're not seeing multiple offer situations. And if sales occur for condos, you're seeing, you know, basically buyers are still able to negotiate. And I would argue that's still related to the sort of the hangover from COVID in the fact that a lot of people still don't feel comfortable being in a condo, being in a condo lobby, that sort of thing. Um, so interesting uh, dynamic there. But I think give it three to nine months, the condo market is going to explode too, because the Bank of Canada has said they're going to keep these rates low with, in the form of quantitative easing, which push down, pushes down long-term rates. And they're, they're not going to raise rates, as we saw today with the rate decision that came out from the Bank of Canada. Go ahead, Christian. Sorry. Yeah, like I feel the same way. I think that the rates are going to go up a little bit. Okay. Not crazy. I think they'll go back down. Yeah, they could go back down. Like, uh, Mike and I were having a conversation before when, yeah, rates are going up. Does that mean they're going to go up forever? Around 2018, no. around there, uh, 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 the rates went up three times by a quarter point, three times in 12 months. Okay. And we thought this is it. We're now heading back for rates, you know, with the four, five, six percent. What ended up happening? The rates were at the low twos forever. Years they were at the low twos. They suddenly crept up, crept up, crept up. And no one predicted this. They ended up creeping back down. They ended up creeping back down. Uh, so, so, so there's a couple comments over here. One person is asking, do I have stats on Victoria and Imo? The quick answer is 100%. Yes, but we're not going to show it today. We don't have the time. Email me, email, email or call me for those and I can get you those tonight. At the end of the, of the talk, you could uh, email Mike, he'll get that to you. Somebody asked this, Mike, and it's a really good question. With the rising rates over here, what, are, what is that going to do to purchasing power? You know, the person with their purchasing power. I think it's going to be, yeah, rising rates do have a, a negative impact on purchasing power. Um, and sorry, Jimmy, I'll ask, answer that question in a sec. Um, yeah, so it will have an impact on purchasing power, but I don't think the rate rises that we're going to see over the next year to two years are going to be significant enough to seriously dent purchasing power. Because right now, if you step back and look at the overall economy, right now we've got a hyper focus on real estate, mortgages, investment, you know, primary residence, multiple option situations. But if we step back, 
and look at the overall economy. If you look at the economy of Canada, the United States, you know, these economies are still coming out of the COVID-19 crisis. We shut down our economies for like three to nine months and they're still having, you know, ongoing, you know, lockdowns and other things. And that has had to put a big impact on, has had a big impact in the economy. So the, the, the North American economy, and I would argue the Western European economies and the, the major advanced economies cannot handle high interest rates. They, they'll basically go into recession. So I would argue that central banks across the world and, and national governments across the world are going to continue to have accommodative uh, monetary policy. So that's low, low, low interest rates. They're going to be printing money. And then, and then central governments are going to be doing stimulus. Like, for example, Joe Biden's uh, $1.9 trillion stimulus package passed this year. And so, of course, that's going to put upward demand on pressure, may put, slight up, put some upward pressure on um, interest rates. But the Federal Reserve is going to keep printing money. The European Central Bank is going to keep printing money. And the Bank of Canada is going to keep printing money. And what that does is it pushes down those long-term interest rates. So I think, yeah, we're seeing an uptick of interest rates right now, but I think they're going to go back down. And if you look at what's happening in the in the stock market, you know, when interest rates went up, the stock market went down. But if you looked at what, you know, for example, Tesla went up 20 percent yesterday because, you know, basically the, you know, the Federal Reserve and, and other groups have come out, uh, other central banks have come out and said, look, we're going to do stuff to keep these interest rates low. So. I don't think you're going to see interest rates rise dramatically, and I don't think you're going to see them rise dramatically, at least until 2022, 2023. The Bank of Canada has said they're not going to do anything until 2023. It may get pulled forward to 2022, but I don't see interest rates going to 4%, 5%, and nobody being able to afford anything because that slows the economy dramatically. And you know what that does to governments that, get, that rely on getting elected? It means they're not going to get elected again, even though... You know, a lot of the time central banks are independent, but still, you know, the, the central banks are not here to um, stop the economy. They're here to support the economy and keep the economy going. And real estate is a huge, huge, huge part of the overall economy in Canada and the United States. So, yeah, I, I don't see interest rates going up significantly. No. And no. Um, if they do, they'll go up slowly. Go ahead. Neither do I. Like, I remember I had a couple of clients and they were saying they were getting quoted on a 10-year fixed rate under 3%, like 2.6, 2.5. That's crazy. The banks aren't stupid. They're not going to do a 10-year at 2.5 if they think the rates are going to go over that. They'll lose money. They'll be losing totally. money. I think that the <laughs> rates are going to stay low, but I think it's a, it's natural for it to go up a little bit. It's just how will people react when it starts to go up? 100%. See, that's the thing. The way to look at a mortgage from a, if you step into the bank's shoes, what a mortgage is, is an investment in real estate. They're investing in you and they're investing in the property. Now, if they loan you, um, you know, $500,000 for 10 years at 2%, and then inflation hits 2% next year, or it hits 2.5% next year, they're losing money. Banks aren't in the in the in the market in the business of losing money. They're in the business of making money. So you know, Christian brings up a really good point. If the banks are willing to risk a lot of money um, to loan, you know, on a on a mortgage uh, and offer a three percent over ten years, you know, I think they have a pretty good uh, you know pretty good idea that things aren't going to go up. And that's another thing too. If we, again, if we step back and look at the big overall economy. Um, before COVID-19 happened, what we were dealing with was low inflation. And so what you're, wa you're going to see is central banks and, and, and national governments want to increase inflation, okay? And, and, and basically, if you get a locked-in mortgage at under 2%, okay, when the Bank of Canada's tar target for inflation and the Federal Reserve has recently said, well, has recently hinted that they'd like to see inflation hit 2%, if you get a mortgage at 1.65% and then inflation goes up to 2% or even above 1.65%, if effectively the bank is paying you for the use of that money. So that's another thing to think about is yeah. if, if inflation kicks off and your interest rate is a little bit higher, it's not so, so much so it's not that bad because your debts, when, when inflation is occurring and you have debts, the value of those debts goes down by the amount of inflation every year. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like some people are asking some really, really interesting questions over here. And one of them is, uh, what are your thoughts on, is it a good time to invest in a condo? Because of course, uh, it's not as, uh, 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 the overbidding is not that much. 
prices, of course, are slowly starting to creep back up. But if you were to invest in a condo, then of course, what to invest in? Something downtown, something that, uh, you know, what, what, what do you think is the rent going to be? It's a pretty broad question over here. But Mike, you know, you work heavily in downtown core with condos, yeah. with things like that. What's your opinion over there as to not only is it a good time and what do you think the rental situation is going to be for the rest of the year? Well, yeah, and this is a really good question. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Jan. So <clears throat> just full disclosure, I recently, or I will be completing on an assignment, a contract that I got at a new condo building in East Vancouver. I should be completing on it at the end of the month, um, or sorry, in April. <clears throat> and the reason why I bought is this, okay? First and foremost, rates are the lowest I've ever seen them. So what I want to do is I just want to take some money that, I, that I've saved put it in, invest it somewhere. And basically the condo that I'm buying is worth about a $500,000. I'm getting, putting a hundred thousand dollars down. I'm getting a five-year fixed rate mortgage. I think my rate's going to be like 1.65. And basically in terms of principal pay down, actually, if I put $120,000 down, it will support itself. And in terms of principal pay down, it will pay down $10,000 a year. Okay. So I'm getting $10,000 a year. Prices go up, prices go down, prices stay stable. And so if I look at the $100,000 that I've invested cash on cash, that's a 10% return on investment per year, okay? So that's that, okay? Now, the other thing I like about this investment is the fact that if inflation does pick up, what is inflation, inflation going to affect? It's going to affect, it's, sorry, it's going to affect the price of real estate because inflation basically pushes the price of real estate up. Real estate is the best investment if you're concerned about inflation, okay? And then two, inflation pushes up rents. So if, yeah, basically that, so that's the reason why I bought this. A, because it'll support itself. B, because it, um, you know, pays, you know, significant amounts per year and per month in terms of principal pay down. And B, it's a perfect hedge for inflation. Yeah. And the part that I was going to include was, uh, and this is what I do with a lot of my clients, is that whenever they say they come to me and they know I'm a real estate guy, can you hear me there? Sorry, guys. My, my call. No, sorry, Mike. We could hear you. So okay, I apologize. So, so the one thing uh, I do with clients is when we take a look at it, uh, you know, it's really expensive. It, the price is high, the price is low. I ignore all those things. I enter in the prices. I enter in the rent. I enter in the vacancy. I enter in the mortgage rate. And I look to see, is it break even? Is it cash flow? Are you negative cash flow? Like, so even if it's like, oh, I have to, I have to bid five grand over asking just to get it. So maybe I shouldn't bid. No, let's look to see, does it make sense? Does the cash flow make sense? Does it make sense with your criteria? You know, what rate are you getting? How much down payment are you doing? So, so yes, this was a good question, but it's a little too uh, broad. We need to dig, dig in deeper. You need to work with a guy like Mike or a, a person like me to say, is it okay to buy a two bedroom condo downtown Vancouver? The quick answer is maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'd, have see, we'd have to see all the other pieces. And it depends on your personal financial situation. In terms of that question, you need to talk to Christian because he can look at your financial situation and say, you know, based on what you've got, you know, do this or do that or do this or don't do this based on what's tax efficient, what's best for your retirement, what's best for your family situation, you know, all that stuff. Christian can help you with that. Yeah. Once you get that under control, come talk to me and I will show you the options that work best for your personal financial situation because everyone's different. Everyone has a different employment situation, different investment situation, different tax situation and different lifestyle situation. And what Christian and I do is we help you with a, a plan that is customized and specific to, to individuals, every one of you. So, so, you know, we can help you, but again, it gets beyond the scope of what we're talking about for this, but you know, we're, we'd love to talk to you after this. Sure. Mike, I'm going to put you in the hot seat, ask you some fast and furious questions, okay? Go ahead. Right now, with the environment, what continues to be the hottest, like, in-demand, like, total seller's market with this certain type of product, what and where? Single-family houses east of Boundary Road to basically Hope and um, the North, Van North Shore and uh, single family houses, you know, south of the Fraser under 2.5. Basically, single family houses in the, across greater Vancouver under 2.5 million, um, under 2 million are just on fire and crazy, crazy, crazy right now. Got and it. you're going to see big price appreciation coming in the next few months based okay. on the stats. When you say on fire, if someone's like, hey, I wanted to buy one of those, I was thinking of buying one of those. If they were to come in right now, 
uh, they got to be subject free, like no subjects, even to standard. And if, if we got to do overbid and over asking, how much we got to go over to get this thing? <laughs> you know what? It's anybody's guess. But oh, another thing too, I mentioned the Okanagan is the same way and Southern Vancouver Island and the Nanaimo area as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you're going to be trying to buy one of these things, the first thing you want to do is talk to somebody like Christian. Then you want to talk to your accountant to make sure that everything's good from an accounting perspective, tax perspective. Then most importantly, you want to talk to your mortgage broker to know exactly how much you can spend before you go out shopping. And you want to make sure you get your mortgage broker, your accountant, your financial planner, all the documentation they need in order for them to go to you it's okay, thumbs up, you can get that property that you want. You can go to that price because you need to know what you can spend before you go out there because with a multiple offer situation, the whole process is backwards. You basically do your home inspection first. You send the information to the mortgage broker before you write your offer. You do the home inspection before you write your offer. You do all that stuff so that when you're presenting an offer, you're presenting a clean offer. You know, Going subject free on a property involves risk but you can hedge and mitigate that risk by doing your due diligence in detail before you submit your offer, okay? So that's the key. In a market like this, you need to be prepared. You need to have everything done and ready before you go shopping. Another thing too is doing this sort of thing where you get prepared first, where you get everything done, can make your offer a lot more powerful if you're operating in markets that aren't as hot as single family houses in the areas that I mentioned. You know, if you're looking for a condo in downtown Vancouver and you've got a property that's been on the market for 150 days and maybe there's an indication that, um, you know, somebody is motivated to sell. Well, if you go to somebody with a subject free offer and a deposit check, they're going to be a, they're, they're going to take you a lot more seriously if you're coming in at a lower price rather than if you say, oh, here's an offer, you know, 10 percent below asking, but I need you to wait two weeks while I get all my stuff done and I'm not 100 percent sure if I'm going to go forward. You know, so th that's another thing to think about is preparation, getting ready, having all your T's dot, all your I's dotted before you go out shopping can really get you a better deal than if you don't. And, and, and the part, I guess, that you sort of alluded to, the part, the part that I play with clients and with new clients is I sometimes find that, uh, let's say they, they're trying to buy a 1.3. Let's say the mortgage uh, guy says that, don't worry about it. We can get you as much as a 1.4. They go in with a 1.4. By the time I get to them, I realize that uh, your financial plan shows you're about to have a kid in two year, within a year or two. You want to have two or three kids. You now have one income for a solid, you know, four to five years over here. And you just bought something that was a hundred grand over asking that you could barely pay for already on a 1.6 interest mortgage. And we didn't even do a sensitivity analysis if this thing renews at 2.2, 2.5. Right in the same years when you're when 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 you you're on a single income or you you maybe have daycare, that's what the financial planning piece is needed because people get so caught up in uh, in buying the house that they of course uh yeah they could afford it in the first month. I don't know if they could afford it in the third year or the fourth year or the fifth year when it renews. So that's why I think the, the financial planning piece is good, but uh, I want to still keep you in the hot seat over here. It's okay? true. Safety first. When you're doing this, safety first. You never want to have anything blow up in your face. You never want any terrible surprises. And working with somebody like Christian, working with somebody like myself and with a good mortgage broker and a good accountant will mean that you're not going to have any nasty surprises or you're not going to buy anything that you can't afford or that's going to cause problems for you. Go ahead, Christian. Thanks. All right, so in the hot seat, mortgage rates, let's say they go up, they've gone up by a little bit. Uh, so let's say you uh, qualified for a 1.6, 1.7. Let's say they go up, you haven't bought anything or you're a little bit late to the game. Now you're at 1.9. Let's say you're at 2%, for example. Mike, what do you think that that's going to do to housing prices come uh, in three, four months when all of that starts to shake out? Yeah, you know what? Well, first and foremost, I don't know if you can see that kind of price appreciation. I'm oh, sorry, I, I don't think you're going to see that kind of uh, interest rate appreciation. But I think what it's going to do is it's just going to take the market from being white hot and crazy to being red hot. You know, I've been doing this for 15 years, and I've been through three of these big run ups in prices. And, you know, the, the first two that I went through, interest rates were like 4%, 5% you know, they were much higher than they are now. So you can have a surging interest. You can have a surging real estate market with much higher rates. And here's why something that I don't think a lot of people think about is right now, the most, the longest amortization you can get on a property is 30 years. Most of them are 25 years. 
When I first started in 2005, you could get a 40 year amortization. Now, if there's anybody who's out there, like anybody out there is like me, I love doing mortgage analysis. If you get a 45, 40 year or 35 amortize, year amortization, that dramatically increases the, the purchasing power of a buyer of real estate. It dramatically Im- reduces your payments. It dramatically increases your interest cost. But what it does for investors is it makes it very, very good because if you've got a 40 year amortization, most of your mortgage payment is interest. Okay. Now, if it's mostly interest and it's an investment property, that's a good thing because it gives you a bigger tax deduction on the revenue coming in from that property. And then if you've got that 40 year amortization and you've got rising prices, it provides beautiful leverage. So the thing is, is you may see interest rates go up, but you know what the Department of Finance can do? They can say, okay, guys, we're concerned that interest rates are going up. We're concerned that it could slow the real estate market down. We want to keep the real estate market going. We're going to push out um, amortization. So instead of getting a 24, uh, 25 year amortization for most people, most people can get 30 years. Or if interest rates go up to 3%, okay, 40 year amortizations, boom, no problem. That will increase affordability dramatically and it will keep the real estate market um, perky. Because right now, like I've said in previous ones like this, the federal government and the Bank of Canada use the real estate market in Canada as a way to prop up the Canadian economy or to use the the real estate market as a safety balloon for the Canadian economy to keep it from collapsing. They did that in 2008, 2009, and they're doing that now because the Bank of Canada has said that they're going to keep um, they're going to keep their policies accommodative. So what that means is they're going to keep the, the prime rate, the, the, the Bank of Canada's prime rate low, and they're going to continue to print money. Okay, right now, Bank of Canada is printing $4 billion every week. Okay, so they're basically printing $4 billion Canadian dollars every week to keep those long-term interest rates low. Now, if those interest rates get forced up because of the bond market, they'll just push out amortizations. They'll just loosen up things. So yeah, I, I uh, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloomers out there. I don't see it happening because we need low interest rates to keep the economy ticking over right now because we're coming out of COVID. Now, Mike, okay, another hot seat question over here, okay? Is there any area in the lower mainland where you actually feel that this would be a good buy? It's not crazy white hot. You're not competing with a million people over here, either an area or a product, no? Yes, Yale Town. Downtown, downtown. downtown Vancouver. It's slow. Anything like 2.5 or over, 2, 2, mil, 2 mil or over in downtown Vancouver. And basically anything downtown Vancouver, Yale Town. One bedrooms are pretty hot. There's a lot of demand for those. But, you know, two bedrooms. Another thing, too, is um, two bedrooms in North Vancouver, larger units in North Vancouver. That is actually for condos, relatively soft. There are patches, there are pockets where the market isn't that crazy. And I would argue that a lot of that softness in the condo market is a holdover from COVID-19. You know, there's the reason why everybody wants single family houses because, you know, they're hot. Okay. And people are concerned about, you know, could COVID-19 still, but once that, once that inoculation happens, once the mass inoculation happens or the vaccine comes out, once the borders open, I think the entire market is going to surge and particularly condos because, you know, up until COVID-19, we had 350,000 new people coming to Canada a year. 2020, we only had 187,000 people coming. Right now, you know, Immigration Canada and the federal government are doing everything and anything they can to get people who are in the immigration system fast track so they can get, become permanent residents, so they, become, so they become citizens. Before COVID, the federal government said they wanted to bring 400,000 people in a year going forward. So 400,000 people, that's a lot more than 350,000 people. Now, none of those people are coming. There's going to be a huge amount of people coming to Canada, both as immigrants, both as foreign students, both as visitors. And that's going to create massive demand for condos because when people are new to this country, where do they go? When people are visiting as, 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 as tourists, where do they go? Do they go to Maple Ridge or do they go to downtown Vancouver? They go to downtown Vancouver. They go to downtown Victoria. They go down to they go to condos in Kelowna. You know what I mean? Because that is where people, you know, that's where people land because it's simple, it's easy to understand. These are walkable, great areas. And so I think right now, condos in the cores of cities are still a fantastic buy. And I think if you buy something like that, you're going to be extremely happy going forward uh, with your investment because you're going to see a huge surge when the borders are open because the borders are still closed. 
Yeah, no, this is great. This is great. I want to slowly, we will leave time for questions at the end, more questions at the end. I just want to uh, slowly start to wrap up over here, okay? Uh, rising rates, what is the prediction for real estate in Vancouver as a quick summary over here? In the short term, there's going to be added pressure to buy for those with low locked in 120 day rates, you know, in, in the low to mid ones, okay? If the rates start to move up, just by a little bit, you're going to have people who said, hey, I've already got this locked in rate, but it's going to expire in the next 30 days or in the next 60 days. I got to buy right now, right now. So you're going to see, uh, I predict as is Mike, it's still going to be very, very hot for entry level detached homes, especially if they come with suites in it. That they seem to be hot as hell because they all need the mortgage helper because they're making the jump from condo uh, into uh, into house. But what's going to happen around summertime over here? This is our prediction. I think there's going to be a natural slowdown in volume. You know, maybe some people are, are, are taking their house off the market. There's going to be uh, summer is always a little bit slower because people don't really want to sell. They, they sort of wait till September again. So the craziness of the overbidding and all of that, I think will slowly start to, to, to go away. It won't be as hot as it is right now over here. Uh, but do I think that there's going to be a decrease in prices? No. There, there's just no indicator of any form of decreases in prices that I can see based off of the analysis that I've done. But there will be a, probably a cooling. And what I mean by a cooling is of the multi bids. So right now, someone puts a 1.3, they end up selling for a 1.5, right? But if someone's putting a 1.3 in the summer, you'll probably get around that area if all the multi bids just start to cool themselves down. So the actual list price, I can't see them, you know, going downward. I could see it, if anything, going upward, but I do think that there will be the craziness will cool down a little bit over here. Mike, did you want to add anything else to the predictions here? Yeah. Thanks for that. I don't necessarily agree. I think what you're going to see is, what I, in my experience, what's happened is you've seen this massive run up in prices and the prices run up and they plateau at a higher level where sellers just won't negotiate as much because they know things could pop off again. So I think going into the summer that you're going to still see more of this craziness. And I think you're going to still see price rises. And I think once there's vaccination, I, I, you know, a lot of people that I know in the real estate business and a lot of high profile people that I know who know their stuff, they're saying that once the borders reopen, you're going to see a 25% jump in prices across the board because of all the demand from people coming from elsewhere. So, you know, in, in terms of people that I work with, I got a lot of people who are in the rest of Canada or Canadian citizens who are not in Canada, who are waiting to come back to buy. And I think there's a lot of pent up demand from people who are outside of British Columbia who want to come in and buy real estate. So I personally, you know, I, I just, I respectfully disagree. And I think you're going to still see things surge, especially once those borders reopen. Well, I think uh, uh, either way, we both agree on one thing though. There's no way prices are going down. Can we agree on that? <laughs> exactly. There's no way prices I mean, are going yeah. down. So it's either, Prices are going up, except you won't be in a crazy environment or prices are going up and it'll be a crazy environment. Those are, those are the two options that you, you want. I want you guys to get out of this. Okay. So what I want to do is just, it is starting to get a little bit late over here. Um, uh, if you did have a question, now would be the time to type it in. Uh, even after the recording, we're going to continue to field your questions. Here at Latitude West, our philosophy has always been you should not have all of your money in the stock market. We like the stock market, but we don't think that it's a great idea to have all of it in. We like investment real estate. And of course, what better investment than your own home? But uh, we want to do an analysis to see if it makes sense. So we are one of the few financial advising teams that integrate your real estate, whether it be investments, whether it be your personal real estate, as a major part of the actual financial planning process to see where you're going to be in the future. So um, final conclusion over here, like I always say, don't try to time the market. It doesn't make sense. Don't try to time it, okay? Uh, here it says uh, um, a prediction, rates will increase slowly, okay? But we do think prices will stay the same, if not go upward, okay? Uh, uh, I'm hoping that the seller's market will cool off a bit. Mike doesn't think that it's going to cool off too much though, okay? What am I doing with uh, clients right now? Reviewing their strategy, ensuring that they're taking advantage of opportunities, but in a very, very safe way over here. If you'd like to be part of our next talk over here, uh, Thursday, April the 8th, it's already on the Latitude West website, 6 p.m. Thursday, April the 8th. Just a quick reminder that we always record this. So even if you register, but you can't make it, we will 
send you the recording. If you're on the call right now, a lot of people came in late over here. I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try to send it to everyone who registered. And I would encourage you that you share this with other people, either post it, uh, uh, send the link, post it on your Instagram or send it to family and friends. Anyone who's thinking of buying uh, and would like to know what our prediction for uh, the rest of 2021 is, by all means, share the link that I'm about to send to you, okay? Um, uh, to register, of course, latitude-west.ca backslash workshops. Just look for the, the date. April the 8th is our next one over there, okay? So I'm going to stay on this one over here while we field questions. If you are ready to connect and you want to connect with me to talk about some financial planning around your real estate uh, or investments, uh, and reach out to my assistant at assistant at latitude-west.ca. If you want to reach out to Mike, his cell phone, 604-763-3136. And uh, uh, he could also be uh, found at uh, Vancouver, oh, Mike, uh, uh, at Mike, Mike at MikeStewart.ca. Mike at MikeStewart.ca. Mike at Mike Stewart .ca. Now, uh, the, 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 the statistical report that I showed of uh, the detached, the condo, and the townhouse, unfortunately, I couldn't show the townhouse one. Uh, Mike can send you the full report in the form of PDF if you email him at the end of this call. Feel free to do it right now. Give him an email. He'll send you the report. So, yeah, and, I, and I've got it for Victoria, Nanaimo, um, Fraser Valley, Vancouver, and the Okanagan. Got it perfect. all. Perfect. Some people were asking how come Surrey wasn't on there and do you have the one? The so so, so right now, Mike will have all of that over there. Okay. So we're going to stay on the call right now. We're inviting you to, of course, connect with us uh, uh, later this week or uh, when you're ready to talk. But for those who want to stay on the call, we will continue to field your questions. Uh, and for others, you know what? Have a great, uh, have a great week. Uh, be safe. Uh, gratitude to all of our frontline workers over there. So I'm going to end the call, but I hope to hear from you guys soon, and I hope to see you next month.